Having made the clamping blocks for the stop, it needs a, an adjustable screw to go through that hole, and that's going to get a um, like a ball bearing in the end of that to give it a hard stop. There'll also be a little dog tooth screw from the side to keep that main screw keyed into the part, and then there'll be a micrometer nut and a lock nut front and back. Turning down the bar stock to something like 17 millimeters and using a collet chuck here because I'm going to be taking this bar in and out of that chuck quite a lot so keep the concentricity as close as I can with a collet rather than a three jaw chuck. You might notice I'm already using the stock as it is half finished to um, limit the travel so that there's no crashing into the collets or the collet nut. There really are no end of um, cheap, poor quality knurling tools available on Amazon. This thing is so weak that you can't very well travel it backwards and forwards. It's a matter of setting its uh, depth of cut or depth of knurl and then just keep feeding it in, take it out, move it along a bit, feed it back in again. Now the nuts that are going to come off this bar are going to be quite short so uh, pretty ropey knurl is good enough for this really. And that is a fairly poor quality knurl. It's going to be okay because it's going to be cut up into short pieces. If that was going to be left as um, one long continuous knurl like that, it really wouldn't be good enough. Improved knurling tooling um, is a plan for the future. This is just to clean up the, um, the edge of the knurling pattern. That uh, section of the bar there is going to be the area where the micrometer marks are going to be so that needs to be nice and um, you know, half decent surface finish nice and clean and a good edge to the knurling pattern as well drilling through the end of the bar that's going to have to be um, I think it's 8.5 mil for an M10 thread but I am going to have to drill that hole fairly deep. It's got to go um, pretty much all the way through all of that bar that's there so that I can tap the thread through it. I think this was six millimeter to um, try and preserve a straight hole. right the way through as long as it will go. Followed up with the 8.5. Now this tapping exercise here is really to get the thread established in the hole and to get it established straight. I didn't really have any expectations that that thread was going to be tapped all the way in that hole in the lathe because you just can't hold everything together tightly enough. Things keep spinning. As the thread was already started, um, you can take that out, put it in the vise and use a proper tap wrench on it and it did take quite some tapping. Of 
I think these are called zero flute countersinks. They don't chatter, they just carve off a single curly shaving and leave a nice clean chamfer. Here we are with a uh, comedy combination of dividing head and tiny milling machine. I've not used a dividing head before, this is the first time I've set it up. So I'm double checking everything at every step and probably double checking a lot of things that I don't need to even look at because I don't know what I'm doing. But um, with no DRO or no sort of digital registers on that mill, I'm having to do everything on the hand dials. Some of those divisions are four millimetres long, some are eight millimetres long. And the potential for getting it, uh, getting it all cocked up or at every single step. No shame in double checking stuff though. That is actually a 5mm carbide chamfering tool. It's very delicate in itself but um, it seems to have a sharp enough point on it that will cut. I'm cutting some pretty um, visible divisions in that nut. So every fifth division is um, the full length of about 8mm along the length of the nut. The um, intermediate divisions are half that length at 4mm. Not sure I'll ever use it as a micrometer nut but um, while you're making it it's, it's there for the there for the option. This has gone back into the three jaw chuck for the parting off of each nut. The collet chuck just isn't rigid enough to be able to cope with this. It's not a very strong lathe anyway so um, parting off is quite treacherous. Now there is a reason why you don't try to catch parts when you're parting them off if the parts are threaded because it tears off the last remnant of the thread and um, those jagged edges are going to catch the end of your fingertips and uh, rip them to pieces so don't try and catch them. Those two nuts do need to be finished off, um, faced off, cleaned up, chamfered but uh, I don't want to hold on to the outside because it's either marked for the micrometer or it's knurled but they can be held on the inside so using the remnant of the um, bar left in the chuck put a small stud in there and then the nuts can be threaded onto that stud and finished off by holding onto them with the internal thread. piece of 10mm bar for the, um, the main screw that's going to need a keyway carved into the side of it so that's uh, two millimeters wide 12 millimeters long I think I made it about uh, three or maybe four millimeters deep tiny little carbide end mill didn't want to break it very light cuts backwards and forwards Now I want the thread on this screw to be um, as, as close a fit as possible into the nut. So I'm using wires to measure the thread down as I'm cutting it. Now once I get close to the um, largest um, tolerance or largest measurement that it's supposed to be, I'll then start testing it with a nut and um, try and get the nut fairly tight once it's on there. Not easy to use those wires but um, they are the way to measure things so that you don't go too far with it. 
I could have used a three piece of threaded stud here, but a piece of threaded stud would have been too loose and sloppy. And the nut does go on and it feels fairly good but it um, it does start to bind up a little way on. can't remember if I took any more cuts from that thread or whether it, uh, it just cleaned up with um, polishing and filing and whatnot. But it finished up being a good snug fit. I'm reaming the end of this screw with a 5mm hole. Has to take a five millimeter ball to give it a hardened contact point when it hits the carriage. I'll also um, chamfer the end of that screw off a bit later as well. This is a uh, quite horrific attempt at soldering that ball into the end of the screw. It kept popping out, pushed it back in, and it stayed in. So it was passed as good enough. needs a small dog tooth cap screw that's going to go through the main block of the carriage stop and uh, into the side of the 10 millimeter screw into the milled slot that will hold the screw in place and stop it turning so that the adjustment takes place on the two nuts difficult to hold on to so um, solve that by putting an allen key in the vise and then putting the screw on the end of the allen key you can keep hold of it enough to be able to file the end of it then. Final assembly is to put it back on the carriageway onto the bed. top of that block is um, deliberately flat so that I can put magnetic bases and uh, other attachments onto it if I need to. This uh, shallow nut at the back is it's just a lock nut to help lock the thing in place. With the main feature being this micrometer nut on the front end. There is a line engraved on the top of the uh, main block as well to line up with those graduations. So the hardened ball collides with the carriage making a repeatable stop. And if there's any need for any adjustment I can adjust it at 0.1 millimeters per time should I ever find myself needing to do that. Since making this I've used it on almost every cut that I make to stop crashes and it's um, very useful for cutting lengths of shoulders and um, setting limits. It's very useful.